Welcome to I Love Stocks. This is part four of a series of five on a watch list. How I can take just five tickers and make a play on them every day. And so far I've had four successful days of trading this watch list on that thesis. So we're going to go ahead and look at them. They're going to be Apple, Tesla, Boeing, Baidu, and JFIN. Now I've already traded Baidu once and I've traded Boeing, that's where I took my loss at, and then I got back in it today. I traded Tesla, and I've traded Apple. So today I traded Boeing and Tesla. And we're going to go ahead and look at the charts and just kind of walk through them. It's been a pretty rough week at the beginning, and then today was kind of a relief rally where we did have, you know, a negative morning, and then she just came around and bounced back pretty good. I can tell by trade ideas we're going to have a good day because she was popping green most of the day. So we're going to go ahead and talk about Tesla first. She's my favorite of all trades. They were comparing this as a sympathy play with Bitcoin, and as you could tell, when Bitcoin bounced today, so did Tesla, vice versa. But they're coming out with, and this is another thing, a lot of these ones that have real good runs all of a sudden start coming out with some negative news. And I think the media is in cohorts with Wall Street to bring some of these tickers down so they can get in at a better price. I've always been bullish on Tesla and it would be a non-stop game. Uh, if it dips, I'm still bullish on it. I'll still take the trade and scalp it up. And today was just a beautiful day. I took it on this double bottom down here, took the exit right here, and then I had some that I held on position and I sold up here. And then I talked about getting back in it down here right around the 423 area and just didn't do it, knowing that the stock was bullish. But it did pull back to a pretty good support level on the neckline of this inverse triangle. And when I see a double bottom like this, I'm all, I'm all in it. And look at that run it had right after that double bottom. I mean, just one, two, three, four, five, six. And by then I knew this thing was bullish. And to take it back down here off the 200 SMA would have been a brilliant trade. But I didn't do it, and she went ahead and ran on up. I was already in the trade to begin with. But I'm saying if I would have added on to this position right here, that would have been just wonderful. But that's Tesla, and I'm still bullish on this stock. It did have some news come out today on it. It was talking about, you know, ARC invested more money on the dip yesterday, smart move. Is this just an ARC trade? No, I don't think so. But she is a catalyst to make this thing run good. Uh, so, you know, Goldman Sachs, new investment product, seeks Bitcoin exposure. So there you got Goldman Sachs getting involved in Bitcoin. Some people think that this is just a, a game, the Bitcoin, but I think it's for real. So we're going to go ahead and see where we can find a resistance on this baby and we're going to look at the 20 day i've got a resistance to break if we can get past this 42 41 we'll take it up to the 652 81 tomorrow but support level i think we could probably call it right around let me see here i want to get a good spot for support yeah i don't want to see it go no lower than this 28 area but i'm going to magnify this up in here and see if I can see anything right now we're at this level so let's call it the pivot point right in here right around 634 to hold this is going to be Tesla I'm going to say right again right there 634 21. That's where we're going to put it. And I'm going to make this a red line. That's going to be my low support tomorrow unless something real bad happens. You know the Bears, they come in here and they they try to, they play it the same way. You know, they'll come in here and scalp for the short. 
as I scalp them on the reversal. So that 634.21 needs to hold with a solid buy right down here at 629.82. Resistance to break, 642.41. And then we can bring it on up here right around 652.80. And maybe bring it up a little bit higher than that to the next level of 655.77. And... 659.16 so those are my three resistance levels actually four if we break this one right here I think we can fill this gap to the 652.81 with a strong buy at 634 Baidu uh, is having issues Baidu, Tencent and uh, Baba all because of China so this thing's definitely pulled back I had a support level that I wanted to close here at 204.03, called it out in the room. I called this trade for a bounce to go up. It decided it didn't want to do that today, and she took a filthy, filthy dip. I got out of it. I put it in my personal account, took about a $200 loss on it, and this is by due. At 204.57, we're at close, and right now we're at 206.25. Yes, this is oversold. An oversold gesture right here from the highs up here, you know, at resistance level of 273 all the way down here to right around under 200 bucks in a matter of a week. A little, little more than a week, but not much. But it's took a drastic plunge here. I want to see it get back up to this resistance level and try to break 215.16 tomorrow if it can. I'll be watching the trade early in the morning. If it pulls back any lower than this $200, I might be starting to watch it to scalp it up, but I have a strong, strong buy at 186.36 if it does pull back to that area. But if we can wake up in the morning and this thing's up, we're definitely going to get to 215.16 and then try to break 220. And that's going to be by due. Boeing. Boeing's another one that I've had on the list. I traded it today, added in my personal account. She, I might have, no, I think I. Traded Tesla only in my uh, challenge account. I was up 240 in my challenge. But she definitely pulled back this pre-market, and it was just a wonderful time to buy it. Had a support level right in here. Called it out in the last video at 233.46. We did pull back to that area with a mention of strong buy down at 229.15. But we did hit this level right here, and this is where we had the triple top breakout. You know, I like to pay attention to these triple top breakouts for a support level if we're pulling back. That's pretty solid. And I'm a chart guy. I play, you know, chart patterns and candlesticks. And I'm a technical trader. So I like to trade the techs and I like to be in the now and get the feeling of the mood of the stock and the market and the money flow. One thing about BA had a big old spike in volume right here. And when that happens... That's usually a bullish sign, and she just, I mean, it was a big spike. We got in it real early down here, and she went ahead and ran up. Now she's got to break this 247.96. If we can get past that 247.96, our next catalyst, now we're getting back up to resistance levels. You know, they were, uh, this week is all about good news, and then this week, everything was horrible. Debt, 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 debt. Everybody took their profit, all the fat cats that got down here at 200 in it, sold it at 278, and then they just started putting out the bad, bad publicity. And that went on for a couple of weeks. And I just say, why? You know, why did they do this to us? Because I was looking for 300 on this trade. But then today, the good news comes out. So the thing pops up. So I think we're going to have a good day on this tomorrow. If it does pull back to a support level, we're going to be looking right in here. I'm thinking right in here, right around the 240 level, 241 for a solid support. I'm going to go ahead and chalk that in with a red line so I can remember that tomorrow. If it does decide to pull back to that area, I'll be seriously focusing on that 240 area to maybe retrace it back up. Anything lower than that is going to be a strong buy. Anything above it is going to be, and we get down here, it's going to be resistance levels. But for right now, if we can break this 247.96, we'll be able to take it on up here to a higher level. And that's going to be right in here 
I'm thinking, well, we've got two of them. We've got one right here at the 249.61, and then we've got that strong ending right up in here to where we start finding a little hard resistance off that 200. And these are my SMA charts. I, I mean, SMA averages. I have the 200 and the 50, and this is all I played off of today. Just these two moving averages, that's it. And then I called a couple RSIs and a couple VWAP trades today. But you don't need much. This is the simplest way to doing it. And I just love using these two moving averages, especially on the on the yearly daily, on the hour, on the 20 day one hour, and plus I like using it for scalping. And I'll show you a scalp play trade that I did make today off this call on Tesla. So yeah, Boeing, I gave you the resistance levels and I gave you the supports with a strong buy of holding, I think at that 240 level, somewhere around that 240, 50 area, somewhere in there. But if we can break this resistance, we're going to move on up to 252, and that's going to be a hard resistance to break. Anything above that's going to be a gift. Unless they start getting more news, you can run this all the way up to 256. So that's Boeing. Next one's Apple. Another great one here. Couldn't play it yesterday, but today was the day to play it. Had a beautiful pullback pre-market. I mean, these fat cats are trying to really screw us over, or the people that are short in stocks. It was a buy signal to me on this engulfing red candle, and then right it open, bam, she jumped on up. That was the signal to wait for the pullback and then get in the trade. And that entry level was right around 119.67 today. If you could have got in that, you had many a times to get into that trade at that level if you let this second candle do its course. And this is only a couple hours into the day. So you don't really have to rush into these trades unless it's a, a one of these kind of runs. But when you see something like this, a big engulfing candle, expect that thing to pull back a little bit. And when you start seeing the body of that one down at the bottom start consolidating, that's the time to get into the trade. So we're going to keep this low support down here at 119.51. I still like it. And I think it'll run up, break resistance level tomorrow, past this 121. And if we can get past 121, resistance level is going to be right up in here, right around 121.73 all the way up to 123.79. So that's Apple. I didn't take the trade this week on Apple at all. It was mostly Baidu, Boeing, and Tesla. And I took a trade on JFIN. That's the next one we're going to talk about, JFIN. JFIN, sympathy play to the, uh, to the, to the, um, sympathy play to the pump and dumpers. But I called a support in the last video on this trade here, right around 825. I said if it hits that 825, you could have a possibility of taking the trade. If you watched the previous videos and jotted that number down, that was a strong buy. So it did dip down to that 825, and it ran all the way up to 934. No, I did not take the trade today. I was too involved in Tesla and Boeing, and that's all I kind of was concerned about. I could have took a trade on Netflix. I mean, there's a lot of great opportunities today. The, I think the market buy position after into close was $3 billion, so I do. And I kind of talked about how this market was going to be today. We we're going to have a nice little red morning. We we're going to consolidate, be green, and then Friday we might have a flat day or it might just go ahead and run on up and pull back a little bit or open up high and just kind of keep at that steady pace. But I'll be bullish for the market into next week, unless something bad happens in the news, and then we'll have to retest that again. But here we are after hours at 927. Now on the, uh, let me see if I can pull up Tesla here. Tesla after hours is at 339. That's not the chart I want to use. This is the one I want to use. I'm going to have to clean this thing up pretty soon. It's getting too many lines on it. A JFIN. Whoops. Here's a little lesson for you. If y'all want to learn how to trade these moving averages, the 50 and the 200 on the daily one minute. I took this trade right in here off the 200. 
she pulled back a little bit. I added another contract to it. And then I told the room, I'm going to take it up to the 50. And that's where I exited the trade, right here at the 50. We did bounce up a couple times a little bit past it, but it was a nice little entry. I took it right in here, and then I bought more of it right down right about in here when I had the confirmation of the breakout. And then once that happened, we went ahead, and I was, I was then by that time, I was able to collect 150 bucks on this one trade right here in a matter of just 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then I got back in it, and I held one position, and then she went ahead and run on up. But I'm completely out of the trade right now. But that's just one way of using the moving averages, and I look for confirmations. You know, I saw this thing right here, and I figured we were bullish all the way. And when she got up after the three, third minute, she went ahead and pulled on back. So there was a little confrontation between the bulls and the bears, and then she finally took off and broke that 50 SMA. So this is just one way of using this if you want to learn how to scalp. And that's what I'm trying to teach some of the people in the room is it's a great opportunity to make you a couple hundred, 300 bucks on these, on these. You got to make sure you're in the right option though. But yeah, that's Tesla. So that's it for the five stocks that were, this is part four of the five part series this week on how to take just five stocks and profit off of each off off of your watch list i've always told people the watch list is probably one of the most important assets that you could have besides the scanner and besides having a decent chart and knowing the the technicals on how to trade and the fundamentals that come along with it and we do watch the money flow and that's a big part of it i personally have been watching the tape for over 16 years and i know how the tape is so that, to me, is in the volume bars, I'm able to tell exactly where the money's going and coming, if it's coming in or if it's going out. But here lately, I'm in a room that talks mostly about the big fat cats that get into these trades, these big blocks, and I've been following that, and I think that's also helped me improve my trading skills. So everybody have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow with part five. Always remember, I love stocks. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Let me have a drink. So we have our Twitter site on here. Miss Vegas is always calling great alerts in the room. Today was Coca-Cola, Fang. It has a nice little bounce this morning. Pulled back a little bit. And just... Oh, Shark Trader... So it's just good to kind of go through here and watch this and see what kind of alerts if you're not a member to our room. Also, we do have little Stock Twits links here. You can follow us on Stock Twits. Mine's right here, Miss Vegas. We have a Pinterest. I don't go in there that much. And we do have a YouTube channel. Please subscribe, ring that bell. And if you like this video and this series, hit that like button. If you have any comments below, I'd sure appreciate that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go out and have me a fancy dinner today. I deserve it. It's been a tough week. I'm down in my challenge a little bit from when I was at the highs, and I'm starting to build it back up. But today was a pretty good day. I made about 240 bucks in it, and that was good enough for me until I build it up to a better, better place. So we'll catch you later, and I'll see you tomorrow with part five. And have a great day. Always remember, I love stocks.